Superfood Evolution presents Cacao versus Cocoa Top 6 Differences and Similarities Number 1. Cacao and Cocoa come from the same tree species The first basic similarity between cacao versus cocoa is that they come from the same tree species, Theobroma cacao a small evergreen natively dispersed between locations ranging from southeastern Mexico to the Amazon basin. Cacao comes from the nuts or seeds of the tree's fruit, which is enclosed within a thick rind called a cacao pod. Typically, a pod contains between 30 to 50 nuts, sometimes referred to as beans, encased within a white, fleshy fruit pulp. The nuts, as well as the pulp, are the only edible portions of the pot itself. Cacao was highly utilized as a sacred food source by Mesoamerican civilizations. The name cacao is believed to be derived from a combination of the Mayan term caca and the Aztec Nahuatl word cacahuat, meaning bean of the cacao tree. The name coco is an early 18th century alteration of the word cacao. Both terms, cacao and cocoa, refer to the seeds or nuts of the Theobroma cacao, and although they are sometimes used interchangeably, the word cocoa was originally adopted more in European countries. Number 2. Cacao versus Cocoa – How They Are Prepared Cacao beans, used to make both cacao and or cocoa, both initially go through the same preparation methods. While both the sweet, tart, mucilaginous fruit as well as the beans themselves can be consumed fresh, the beans don't have a chocolatey flavor straight from the pod. They must be fermented. Although techniques can vary for this process, there are some basic steps involved which transform the beans from white to purple to a dark brown color. What a properly fermented bean is can vary widely depending on the results each producer wishes to achieve. After fermentation, the whole beans can be utilized with or without the skin as a raw cacao product. Or they can be further processed to make what is commonly referred to as cocoa. Number 3. Cacao is unprocessed, cocoa is roasted. Cacao, unroasted beans or nibs, is the purest form of chocolate that has been minimally processed, only needing a short fermentation period to make them edible to humans. Cacao, at this stage, is more of a whole food in its most unaltered state or naked chocolate. When it comes to using the term raw in reference to cacao, it really depends on the source and fermentation techniques employed. When a brand specifies that it is a raw cacao product, this means that they have taken steps to ensure minimal temperatures are employed during fermentation. From our research, we have found that most beans experience an average temperature increase of 104 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, sometimes up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition to beans and nibs, cacao can also come in the form of a cacao powder, paste, or butter. Technically, the point at which a cacao bean becomes a cocoa bean is after it's roasted which is a standard practice for making most all chocolate products worldwide. The fermented, unskinned cacao beans undergo a roasting process at about 248 to 266 degrees Fahrenheit. They are then cracked and winnowed to remove skins, creating roasted nibs. The nibs are ground in a mechanical press to produce what is called cocoa liquor, which is a paste that solidifies into chocolate-like blocks. Though the word liquor is used, cocoa liquor does not contain alcohol. Cocoa liquor is the main ingredient used to make most commercial chocolate bars. Standard unsweetened cocoa powder is made when most of the fat or cocoa butter is separated from the liquor and the remaining material solids are pressed into cakes, dried, and powdered. While some cocoa powder can be of a higher quality than others, all cocoa comes from roasted cacao beans. Number 4. Cacao versus Cocoa Taste Differences One big difference between cacao versus cocoa, especially to the chocolate connoisseur, is the taste. 
Roasting is primarily done because it is believed by most to improve the flavor. But this is of course entirely subjective. We personally enjoy the taste of raw cacao ground fresh into recipes or using cacao powder or paste to make homemade chocolate bars. Cacao is often described to have a richer but more bitter, nutty and subtle fruity flavor in contrast to roasted cocoa, which has a toasted, slightly sweeter taste. We have found from our research that heating and toasting cacao is an ancient Mesoamerican tradition. When preparing unsweetened drinking chocolate, one of the first ways the beans were utilized for human consumption. Interestingly, the Mayan verb for chocolate, chocola, is derived from its ritualistic ceremonial use, which means to drink chocolate together. Although raw cacao or raw chocolate has become especially popular since the mid-2000s when it was largely promoted by those adhering to a raw food diet, today most cultures around the world still use roasted cacao in the form of chocolate or cocoa products. Number 5. Nutritional Value of Cacao versus Cocoa it doesn't take much research to discover that cocoa and cocoa-based chocolate products, especially dark chocolate, do contain some nutritional value in terms of antioxidants like polyphenols and the flavanols, epicatechin, catechin, and procyanidins, as well as minerals according to many studies. But the question remains, are raw cacao products more nutrient-dense than their roasted cocoa-derived counterparts? Although quality powders look pretty much the same, most cocoa and cacao powders have different nutrient profiles. While some of the health enhancing properties of cacao are still present in cocoa powder, especially a higher quality one, they are diminished from roasting techniques. In a 2018 published study, results indicated that traditional roasting significantly reduced the polyphenol content and the antioxidant activity of cocoa beans. In other research, Dutch processed cocoa using a chemical alkali has also been shown to substantially reduce flavonoid content. There is also some evidence of mineral loss when comparing the USDA food composition of cacao powder versus cocoa powder. Data showed an average of one-third or greater loss of some minerals except for iron. Nutrition ratios are shown to be affected by roasting methods temperature, and length of time exposed to heat sources. Whether you choose raw cacao or cocoa-based chocolate, it is best to get higher quality organic alternatives to increase your chances that greater nutrients are present. Likewise, the Ecuadorian Ariba Nacional variety or the Peruvian Criollo cultivar are believed to have a higher nutritional value and antioxidant content over the commercially utilized Forastero or Trinitario varieties. Number six, cacao versus cocoa, theobromine and caffeine content. Cacao and cocoa contain substances classified as methyl xanthines. These are the main alkaloids known as theobromine, caffeine, and to a lesser degree, theophylline. Theobromine, a name of which is derived from the genus Theobroma and Theobroma cacao species, is a bitter alkaloid similar to the structural characteristics of caffeine and its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier and bind to or block adenosine receptors. Both cacao and cocoa can therefore be stimulating foods, depending on your level of sensitivity. This is not necessarily because of the small amounts of caffeine content, but rather from the higher amounts of the energizing theobromine compound. While it is considered one of the major antioxidants found in dark chocolate or cacao, it can also have similar effects to caffeine, but according to some reports, is generally less likely to encourage insomnia or cause anxiety. When comparing the methylxanthine content in cacao versus cocoa, in regard to specific ratios of theobromine, caffeine, and theophylline, there have been identified differences. In a 2018 study published in the Journal of Nutrition and Food Sciences, it was shown that a chocolate bar sample containing 100% cacao had the highest concentration of theobromine in contrast to roasted cocoa, which had the lowest amount of theobromine. 
These quantities may of course vary depending on the quality of the supplier as chemical constituents, such as methylxanthines, are known to increase according to the genotype of the cacao species. It was also substantiated in research that theobromine loss can occur at the roasting stage due to high temperature and amount of time roasted. How to use Whether you choose to use raw cacao or cocoa-based products, either can be utilized in countless recipes and of course desserts. For highest nutritional value as well as rich chocolatey flavor, we recommend using freshly ground cacao nibs or beans in raw chocolate bars and protein shakes. Chocolate in this form is known to synergistically help activate the effects of other superfood ingredients incorporated. Keep in mind that addictive tendencies to both cacao and cocoa are possible. We advise using it in accordance with your own sensitivities and limit intake to special occasions if necessary. Precautions. Cacao and or cocoa is best avoided if you have autoimmune related health issues and or sensitivities to foods containing oxalates. Consult your healthcare provider or dietitian before consuming cacao or cocoa products if pregnant, nursing, taking prescribed medications, or if you have a serious health condition. Thanks for watching. For in-depth information, as well as the best sources of cacao and cocoa we can find, be sure and check out the links in the description box below this video. Please support us with a thumbs up if you found this video useful. And be sure and check out these other informational videos.